And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Sultai Affinity. As y'all know, we play the Demir Affinity deck. We call it Demir Affinity Forge. I'm kind of just cleaning it up a little bit and taking the Forge part out, just calling it Affinity. Um, before, but we're going to try Sultai. This is um, something that we've been talking about the last couple of times of playing it, of how it would probably be better if we add Oko, Thief of Crowns, to the list. Um, because Oko is just such a strong card. Y'all know how good Oko is. <clears throat> but, you know, even just turning any of your, you know, creating food gives you that extra life to stay alive, which this is, you know, like a, a slower deck that has an amazing late game. Like, that, our deck has an awesome late game. We're trying to get to the late game, and Oko does a good job of keeping you alive. Um, you know, any any creature that's a huge threat to us, we can just turn it into a 3-3, so that's not bad. Um, one thing about that, though, is it just does turn it into a green 3-3, so if it was multicolor before, then our, you know, it doesn't, <clears throat> we do turn it into a green creature, so our snake doesn't have protection from it anymore. Um, but we can turn any artifact into a 3-3 also. So since we're playing for Guild Globe for Golden Egg, uh, if we have like these extra eggs and Guild Globes around, we can just, you know, like if we play like an egg on turn two, we can then play Oko on turn three, immediately turn the egg into a 3-3 for some defense there also. So that could be pretty nice for us. Plus, Sahili makes extra 1-1s, one um, and so we can turn those 1-1s one that Sahili makes into 3-3s three with Oko, so that's another thing that we can do there. Now, that that does kind of get rid of our artifact count some, like, you know, like, if they're, if we don't have the extra 1-1s, one it's not as good for, that are artifacts, it's not as good for Steel Overseer, because, um, yeah, it's not an artifact anymore, and that's, that's not as good for Tezzeret, uh, tick up ability. But I think that being alive and having more more turns and everything and playing good defense is probably worth the trade-off there. Uh, <clears throat> so that's kind of like the, the new addition to the deck. Um, our mana base, also, you know, we have just a, a Sultai mana base here, a lot of different um, colors. We got some more interplanar beacons, every, everything over here. No more Field of the Dead. What's up, Hawkeye? We were just talking about you. And if you're going to wear your Halloween hat later on tonight, hope you do. Let's see if let's see Hawkeye has a Halloween hat. I don't know if he'll wear it later. <laughs> he doesn't like these strings on it. We'll try that later. Um, it's a little early for costumes. Um, yeah, so that's so this is our mana base. S still love Golos in this deck though because Golos helps us hit like that sixth land drop to get to these and also just more getting more lands uh, into play is good with mystic forge but yeah the goal of our deck is to get mystic forge in play so we can cast the top cards of our library as long as they're colorless which is most everything in the deck except for our our three drops and our and our six drop tesseret there and then um once we can cast like cast all that stuff off the top we have ugin in play ugin makes our colorless spells cost two less to cast so everything over here can all cost two, including the serpent. So these could all just be completely free, um, and uh, yeah, we just kind of just kind of rifle through our deck. That's that's the plan. And then we usually win with Tezzeret's plus two ability to do uh, damage to the opponent equal to the number of artifacts we control. All right, sideboard wise, we got Karn. We got two Karns in here that can minus. They can go grab our fourth. We got our fourth Mystic Forge in the board to be able to grab off of Karn. We have another Golos. So, like right after Karn, we can get another good blocker with Golos. Um, top end, we got a couple Meteor Golems to be able to destroy stuff. A Citadel, if we want to even uh, play more stuff off the top, including lands. Uh, we have a couple of Spyglasses to grab. Usually, like last time we played this, I played with a couple Spyglasses main to name Oko. I think opposing Okos is going to be kind of a problem, honestly. But, oh well. Um, I got a couple Elder Spells in here for Okos, and also just for like these control decks that are popping up. So we got a couple. I'm going with Elder Spell instead of Noxious Grasp, because it can just kill a lot of Planeswalkers. I think it's a little more... I'm not, I'm not as worried about the creature, so I'd play Noxious Grasp as like a, a Planeswalker removal spell, so I think this is a little more versatile. Plus, it could help out our planeswalkers like getting counters on some of these also wishclaw talisman's a cool artifact to be able to grab with karn because like if we need to go find tezzeret or ugin we go grab wishclaw talisman and then we get to um you know grab our tezzeret or ugin 
And then uh, with Karn in play, the opponent cannot activate artifacts, so they cannot activate Wishclaw Talisman. So that works pretty well there. Um, yeah, and then yeah, Golden Golden Egg and Gill Globe is what we use for like the for the other colors of mana for the you know like Gill Globe by itself. If we just have our three colors, then we play a Gill Globe. Then we can activate you know if we crack a, a globe, we can activate Golos also. I I did take out the Chromatic Lantern. Um, with fitting the Yokos in, so relying on, but we have three colors now, so relying on just Guild Globe to activate Golos, if we want to do that. All right, well, let's 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 see how this does here. Let's get to the games. Let's see if we can get some wins. This is definitely a fun deck to play. It's fun to play a whole bunch of spells off the top of your library. Thanks, Flicker Docs. So we'll see how Oko fits in here. I I don't think that my um, my sideboard is perfect yet at all. It's kind of it's tough with playing. Um, hey, Aguanaba! Thanks extending their tier one sub through December. That is awesome. Thank you so much. It's tough with. I guess I'm gonna just put back one of these eggs. It's tough with Karn having a a great cyborg because you want to have a you know slots for Karn also, and then also with playing a card like Mystic Forge, um, you know you want to have a lot of colorless cards. So if you if you put in a bunch of colored spells into your deck after sideboarding. then Mystic Forge is a lot worse. No, my Tezzeret! Boo. Are you kidding me? Why, why can't you play this? Wait. Auto-tap, what are you doing? There you go. Those blind to tyranny are lost. They just... Your new look is enchanting. Boo. Follow in your deceit. I can play Sahili. I could have played Sahili, but obviously Sahili would just die. I want to be able to play Sahili and then play an egg and have a 1-1 one -one to be able to block with. But... Yeah, they can have Guild Globe. Okay, there we go. But as I said, but the castle is going to come into play tapped. So I like the island.
Hmm. I could just play a 5 5 Stone Coil Serpent. So it's either Sahili plus a 1 1 or play a 5 5. I mean, I could just play like a 3 3 or something lower, but I, I think it's just worth it just to get a really big creature. Not dead yet. All right, and dead. All right, good hand, opponent. Good hand, good hand. So I have a couple of Ritual of Soot that we're going to get in here. Probably an extra Golos. Sahili makes 1-1s, one but Sahili is kind of slow. Hey, Exerps. Yeah, we got a 12-hour stream today. Hey. All right, you're going to sit right there? Um... We'll take the Karns out, get this extra Mystic Forge back in. Okay, I won't bring in the extra Golos. And we'll cut a Sahili. I'm gonna play the Fable Passage first, just to, th to thin the deck. You know, it's either that or, you know, I could play Castle and then the Fable Passage will come into play tapped, or sorry, untapped later. This means that the Castle is coming to play tapped still. Yep, this has Oko and Tezzeret. Yep. They're playing Shield Breaker. Well, that's just going to kill me. Well, very good hand for the opponent. Double Fervent Champion again. That's a card that's like on its own is not that powerful, but if you get two of them, it's really good. And they had two of them. Previously, looks like they got two again. Ugh, that's bad for me. That means they don't care if I block. I'm playing 24 lands. I don't, I don't have very many lands in the deck. But obviously I uh, drew them all. All 
All right. Great hands for our opponent, both games. I mean, even if I would have had a better hand, I don't know if I'm beating that hand. From them. Is it the no downside goblin guide? I mean, goblin guide with first strike. That first strike is critical too. Then my blocking didn't trade with it. Hey, Blue Jin, happy Halloween. All right, so I don't have green yet. Now we do. That's all right, we got to back up. Do they have a backup counter spell? No. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel and worms rule. Surely you must be famished. No chemistry's in sight either. One bite, and all your cares are gone. Kind of testing them, see, see like how like they react and stuff with the Steel Overseer. I don't mind the Steel Overseer getting shocked, but I don't want Emery getting shocked. But Emery is like the the card that. This is the card that I really want to like be able to resolve and and untap with because if we untap with Emery, we get to recast these Steel Overseers that they just killed. Hey, games have been going pretty good today. Yep, welcome, welcome. Um. I invite you to change your ways. It's perfectly fine. I just traded two, you know, I just traded my Serpent and my Emery for three spells. 
perfectly fine. And we still got Oko out here. We draw land, we get to Golos. Oh, We're dear. pretty far ahead right now. The thing though is they have the thing that they got is they got lots of mana and they have the blue castle. Which is a good card to have when you have lots of mana. So even though we're looking good, this castle could could certainly help them out. If they find something like expansion explosion to draw a bunch of cards or something like that. Welcome to the feast. All right, well, they they hit some good draws there. Reclamation into Chemistry's Insight. They kept the other card on top that they were drawing with Insight as well. So we're not too far ahead anymore. King, wild and sovereign and free. Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. So I, I think it's good to just keep the other Oko here so because, you know, they have to find, like, an answer for Oko. And whenever they do, we still have the backup Oko. I, I could have, of course, played the, the Golos and just shuffled and everything. Yeah, so just turn the niv Mizzet into a 3-3. You have a PTQ this Saturday. What should you play? I mean, honestly, you can't you can't really go better than um, Sultai right now. Honestly, so going green gives us Veil of Summer, which is a, a really nice, really nice card for us to have. I think Emery is just always going to get shocked. Like things that that die to shock are not as valuable here. Emery, Steel Overseer. Okay, so if we cut maybe two Steel Overseers and the Emerys and bring in Vale of Summers and this extra Golos. I like a lot of the the artifacts in our board, but I think I want to keep them there for Karn. Okay. So let's go with this. I could see taking out the other two Steel Overseers, though, for, for just two other, like, bigger, impactful cards. Like, you know, like, maybe bring in one of the Meteor Golems. Um... 
for example, or bring in the Citadel. Citadel can be a little rough with them having a lot of burn between explosion and a bunch of shocks. Bone Crusher Giant, if they got that card. Thoughts on Grixis Fires. I'm finishing one with my wild cards, but I'm afraid it won't make it even to platinum. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough playing Grixis right now. I haven't been... I haven't been thoroughly impressed the, the couple of times that I've played Grixis Fires. I don't think my list was perfect, though, admittedly. And and everything there, but still just kind of playing against it. It kind of feels like I don't know. It's it's pretty clunky and expensive, kind of thing. Like just a whole bunch of expensive cards. The games you don't have fire fires, it's kind of difficult to win. Hmm, that resolved. Could go Black Castle, Mobilize District. Could just get another beacon. No, it's probably Mobilize District. Let's get a Fable Passage, actually. Just We can just untap, crack the Fable Passage, just get another land out of the deck, you know, just make it so we're, we're drawing even more spells. So my best card to possibly play right now would be Ugin. I cannot go Sahili and Karn. I do have a backup Ugin. This Golos resolved very quickly, but they could just be could just be holding the gates. Playing a card like Ugin means they have to counter it. All right, we got a backup Ugin. I'm going to play my best card. We are but moats in a vast multiverse. Well then. I want to play a 2-2 two -two Serpent. I speak on, interloper. So they shock again. And then do they have Flame Sweep also? Playing this 2-2 two -two Serpent's not great against Flame Sweep. I could Explosion for up to four. Could recast Insight here. 
yep, we need a seventh land to be able to activate Golos. It's kind of best to have seven mana and then untap with seven mana. Like, it's not necessarily the best to like be like, okay, now we have seven mana, let's activate Golos. Because then you don't get to play the land off the top. It's kind of the best to untap with Golos with seven mana and then play it. I just need to destroy these Wilderness Reclamations, of course. It's just such a good card for them. Giving them all that extra mana. Well, they got more. Okay, one and one. One and one. GG's. Need, Tezzeret needs a card style. It's just Stone Coil Serpent. We're going Pioneer, Dance of the Mance with Ascanta, Bloodfast, Detention Sphere, History. <laughs> uh. You get some, some options there. I'm not sure if that's going to be powerful enough. But detention sphere is good. Dance is just so slow. It's eight mana. You can do such powerful things in Pioneer. Yeah, Nick, Nick's Fleece Ram. That's a good enchantment. And yeah, you can play that. Yeah, you, you should be playing that, Corsair Crucifix. Should go on that route. Going Bant, not. Not Black. Just casting Murderous Rider. They have nothing else to do over there, huh? So I have what? I have a land and a globe down at the bottom if I shuffle. It's not bad. I assume if I'm just going to play Stone Coral Serpent, they're going to kill Stone Coral Serpent. They just have extra murderous riders chilling in their hand over there. But they kill Stone Coral Serpent, that means 
Maybe it's a little bit harder for them to kill Golos. And I think I grabbed Black Castle. That's annoying. Yeah, Thor Authority of the Councils is good in this eye board for Feldar Guardian combo. Chronic Slayer. Thanks for that that uh, six months resub there. Thank you so much, Chronic Slayer. Hey, Saza. There should be Storm Count three. MTG Boss has Storm Count one. Should be Storm Count three. So the life link of Murderous Rider. I'm not exactly doing anything special by attacking. I've always struggled with flash decks with this deck. I've, I've basically never really beat flash decks. We do have three Vela Summer in the sideboard now. That could help out. We, we've never really beaten flash decks with this one, with this thing before, though. So we'll see if these Vela Summers can help out. Um, hmm. Got Sahilis. Let me take out one Sahili. No, Spyglass doesn't help against Flash. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Like, there's there's nothing in their deck that Spyglass does anything against. It's just blank cardboard. I, mean, I guess they play the, the Black Castle. You can stop them from drawing a card with the Black Castle. It doesn't matter. Hey, Starman. Any troll decks soon? No, I don't think so. Like, what? Feasting Troll King? Or Crackling Troll? I like Crackling Troll. 
I think I may be playing a Crackling Troll deck soon. Yeah, I actually have a a donation to do a, a black-white Crackling Troll deck. The list is pretty rough. I kind of want to see if I can change up some stuff with it first. I don't really mind if Sahili gets countered here. I think my plan is just slam down Sahili. And then play, next turn play Mystic Forge, and then the turn afterwards have Mystic Forge with Veil of Summer. So Sultai Flash is more powerful than Simic Flash, but you know, you can struggle with the mana base. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we draw a land here so we can go Mystic Forge with Veil of Summer next turn. You know, like for example, Basic Swamp and Frilled Mystic don't play too well together. But you know, there's there's a lot of double double blues, double greens. Then if they're playing Murderous Riders, we saw a couple of Murderous Riders. That's double black. Do I want green? I think so. The Fable Passage is just it's kind of like the perfect land, because if they don't counter Mystic Forge, we can keep it on top and be able to reshuffle also. It's kind of perfect. All right, well, I guess Oko is Oko is a card I want to play. On the top of your library is really powerful. Watch kings grovel and worms rule. I invite you to change your ways. Been away for a bit. What's the meta looking like right now? Yeah, lots of Oko everywhere. It's definitely like the number one thing in the metagame currently. That's a really good trade for me.
Blair. Pretty good turn. It's the thing about having a card like Mystic Forge out, you just get so many spells that it's difficult. Difficult for them to counter everything. Your new look is enchanting. Uh, no, I wouldn't say no. Idolana Blossoms is good. Alright, double night pack ambusher. I need to find like Ugin. I see you don't share my vision. Bolus of Citadel. Do I get to cast this? Yeah, because it's an artifact, I can cast this. Let's take up like Um, I don't really want a shock land. Blech, still a shock land. Um, go down to five to play Ugin. Choking out lies. I came into being. Okay. So now Mystic Forge costs two mana. Well, I mean, you're going to kill this thing. Let's see. Do I want the four to go to Stone Coil Serpent? Yeah, I probably want that to go to Stone Coil Serpent. So let me play this thing. That's good. Uh, play it here for zero. You cost six? I can't cast you, I die. Well, I'll play you next turn, Tezzeret. You're going to be sweet. Gaze into my face and put this on your true your shape. past is unwritten. This is, this is what our deck, no, I mean, I, I lose, I mean, I, I just lose, like, you just lose automatically for going to zero, you, you, it's like you go to zero and then, like, you gain a life afterwards, but once you go to zero, you lose automatically. It's not like the, the beacon doesn't happen automatically.
I mean, they're pretty dead. I mean, they're very dead. It's just how much stuff we want to do. I can play that for free with Tezzeret. But then I'm not doing anything with this other Ugin. If they try to counter this, I can Veil of Summer. And then draw this Ugin. Okay. Do not cross me. Free Ugin. I don't get to tick up the other Ugin because I want to play the new one. I know more than you could learn in a thousand I'm just showing my opponent more of my deck. That's all I'm doing here. Yeah, we're just flexing. We're just showing how cool it is. We just get to play everything for free. With the combination of Tezzeret gives all my artifacts and Planeswalkers affinity. So like they all just get to be free. And Ugin makes all these colorless spells cost two less. I have one of those in play. So I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten artifacts. So this is free for ten, but then I also have the two for Ugin, so it's just free for a 12 12. So that's pretty good. I guess I could have played this first, and it would have been a 13-13. It doesn't really matter. What's up, Toasted? My presence alone will guide you towards victory. See if we can basically mill, mill out. Uh, I ran out of stuff to play. I mean, I could play the Golos. I think that's that's a little overkill. All right, time to claw. Claw time. Come on. Come on, Arena, do the claw. Yeah, there we go. Bzz, bzz. Ugh. You should just yep, sure did, Rudy. Arena was panicking there. All right, now can we win on the draw? This is the difficult one to win for sure. Hey, Kenpachi. Um, no, you just you get an email in a couple of days for whatever you finished in. If the season's already over, if if it already reset. Thanks, Pepega. Yeah, like this is this is definitely a a fun deck to play. I really like this affinity deck. Hopefully, like, I've I've never really beaten the, the Flash decks before, but now we have Veil of Summer, and so, you know, we got to win that game with the help of Veil of Summer. It certainly helped. Your donation deck looks pretty good. Yeah, well, we're got, I got that. You told me to play it late in the day, so I got that scheduled down here at the bottom. Steel Overseer is better to have out early so it can just start growing. But Guild Globe means that we get to definitely play Oko next turn. That's very good for me. They didn't play a creature right away either to put pressure on me. 
So obviously our, our deck wants to just play it to the late game. No green mana. Darn. All right, so we got to be worried about a wolf. Hmm. about me is absolute nonsense and I think a little merriment is in order no Arcanist Owl do not play that card that's not good enough for Pioneer <laughs> yeah, we got the Halloween tie and everything. Busting out this this tie I've never worn before. The tie, the design. I don't know. It's just a, this is like this is the pattern. It's just a Halloween tie that looked really cool. It's like a. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. There's a little skull in there. You're blind to your folly. Your new look is enchanting. Would have preferred to draw a land, of course. Would have been able to play Steel Overseer and Golden Egg. Uh, that's really bad for me. That's really bad for me. Hey, Harmonious Archon's a cool card. But yeah, I understand getting four of those already and rewards when there's so many other good mythics. Understand that being a little frustrating. Another Oko is awesome. Please draw land. Come on, deck, please draw land. Come on, draw land. Draw mm, land. You're too close minded. Yay. That was perfect. Those blind to tyranny. Let's broaden your existence. All right, shut down both these ambushers. That's huge, shutting down that card. Fires of Inventions, the card style reward. That's a good one. Okay. 
Land. Ugin. And here we go. Hopelessness and fear are the seeds of disaster. The truth lies beyond vision. Okay. We're doing good. Still just attacking me. I've already played two murderous riders. Hoping they don't have another. Yeah, Vessel of Nascency is a good card. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, mirror maid? No, I don't. I don't like mirror maid. Ooh. Um. Okay, good. We'll tick up here. Get rid of this land. Ether itself serves me. I mean, I could just play a new Ugin. Or just play a huge stone coral serpent. I feel like my opponent is trying to play this brazen borrower. I could have just gone 5 5 here and then still been able to crack one of these and gain 3 life. Like, that may have been safer. All right, I think we got this. Yeah, we should have this. All right, you block you, you block you, you block you, and you just jump. Oh, I guess this thing's going to be four. I should have blocked the other ambusher. Oh, yeah, I could have blocked the ambusher there and then just traded with the 2-2. Two -two. I, I, was, I was, forgot I was getting the two activations because this whole game I've only been getting the one activation. All the Mystic Forges. Oh, that's lagging. Um, how much do I want to play you for? Let's do four. Leave myself two mana. To activate. Wild True with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there. Wild True, I appreciate that. Alright, so I'm at 4 life. Alright, I'll keep that there. Um, you just kill this thing. This faith in ghost. I'm going to just minus Ugin the next two turns, because then we can just play new Ugins. Our 
fourth sub of the day. Oh yeah, I guess it was it was lethal, wasn't it? If I just attack with a stone coal serpent and kill their blocker. Yeah. Then I don't get to do like all this cool stuff. All this stuff's pretty cool. Alright, just play you for free. Play you for free. You cost two mana. All the lands. Okay. Um... More again. I'll play more spells. It's all lands. Alright, I tried. I tried. To play more stuff. So that's 17 Trample. They're putting 3 Toughness in front, 6 Toughness in front. So that's 11 damage, plus they gain 2 life. Oh, you're welcome, BCD. You are very welcome. Okay. So we'll kill these two things. BCD said, I don't know if it gets said enough, but thanks for always playing different decks. It's very entertaining. And a bunch of people. <laughs> um, agreed with that sentiment. Well, it well, thank you all for being here and watching and, you know, always talking in chats and making uh, my day job very enjoyable. So thank you. All right, I'm going to reset Arena. It's acting slow. You're going to try to craft it? You're free to play, though? Uh, yeah, this is this is definitely a tough deck to craft. It's free to play, especially the like, Tezzeret. Tezzeret's a tough card. But then there's a lot of rares. You like Serpent, Arcbound Ravager. And there's a lot of rares that don't get played like other places either. So honestly, as a free-to-play player, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend crafting this deck. Beanstalk Giant, that's a good one. And Fires, those, those are two good ones. We get six packs. Ah, I you get moved down if you're just in silver and <laughs> limited. Uh. Hey, no carbon. Happy hollow stream. All right, let's crack our packs. This is a fun deck to play, though. Have you tried Jeskai Fire Super Friends? Um, I'm pretty sure I have. Harmonious Archon. So we knew this was a mythic because we have all the rares. So if it doesn't if it doesn't show, it's either a mythic or a wild card. So that's a great pack. So just getting one mythic out of the six is good. We'll see if we get lucky and get another one. No nope. gems. Um, to answer your question, though, I think yeah, I think Jeskai Fire Super Friends has some potential. I think Deafening Clarion is just is is just a really good good spell. I think that's the the big pull for me wanting to play Jeskai Control is is Clarion. Obviously, Teferi is very good also, and like there's there's other good stuff. 
All right, just a bunch of gems besides that, but we got an Archon. You just opened 10 packs. You got four Mythics and a Mythic Wild Card. That is crazy. That's, that's awesome. Once you have all, like, four of every rare in the set, then instead of just giving you a, a fifth copy of, of a, a rare that you already have four of, you can't use a fifth copy, you just get 20 gems as, as what you get instead. No, because if they just gave you a wild card every single pack that you open, it would just be it'd be really easy just to start buying tons of packs and just get tons of wild cards, and it, it'd just be um, it wouldn't be a good system for wizards, basically. Hey, Rankler, happy Halloween! Yeah, don't don't play Dawn of Hope. Dawn of Hope's not yeah, that's not good enough for that format. It's gotta be better things. Uh yeah, we'll keep it. A lot of lands, but you know, hopefully we draw into there we go. Spells. Thanks, Rankler. Yeah, I got a ho nice Halloween tie. Boo. Why do I have to like, draw my best card in my deck right before they thought Erasure? <laughs> Why does that always have to, have to happen? Well, Narset and Supreme will do completely different things. Or wait, no, I was thinking Supreme Verdict. Um, but yeah, Narset's a lot better than Supreme Will. Will. Yeah, I would not play Supreme Will. That, like, wasn't really good enough for Standard. Like, don't play cards that aren't good enough for Standard in Pioneer. Like, Dawn of Hope, Supreme Will, like, those are cards that are not good enough for Standard. Don't put them, don't put them in your Pioneer deck. It's an easy thing to, to do is was this card good enough for standard whenever it was in standard? If the answer is no, don't put it don't put it in your pioneer deck. Here goes nothing. My favorite magic card is probably Courser of Crufix. What deck do you I've think a just okay player can use to climb the ladder? I would... Uh, I would definitely recommend... You're not an artifact, are you? I don't think you are. No, you're not an artifact. Definitely recommend a Noko deck. You know, like it's if you want like the best thing to climb the ladder, if that's something that, that you really want to do, then you know, playing something like Sultai is is your best option right now. But there's a good chance that in eighteen days, whenever the next BNR announcement is, something from Sultai leaves the format. Yep, it's the end of the month, so the season reset. Don't worry, I got this. I 
I will invert the world to watch kings grow. One bite, and all your cares are gone. Too close minded. Here we go. All right, it's the net deck. No, you do not get Overseer back if you Elk Deputy. Elking Deputy doesn't change anything about the its its text. I'll protect you. It's like an it's an ETB trigger that it's just whenever it enters the battlefield, you exile until Deputy Detention leaves. Um, it's like getting rid of that text doesn't do anything. Blood is my beginning, and it will be your end. I guess you. So many lands. I've got it. All right, so we're we're close. We've gone through basically half the lands. With one more land, we've got we'll go through half of our lands. There's half the lands in our deck gone. That's twelve out of twenty-four. So we've seen twelve lands and eighteen cards. This well, that's great. Might be a bad idea. This is but a taste of my power. Kind of like our chances for games two and three. So if we just, you know, draw reasonable spells, that we should be fine. But we did not draw reasonable spells. Yeah, it was a really unlucky land game there. 13 out of 19 cards were lands. And there's only 24 in the deck. Bleh. Alright, so we get these Veil of Summers. We're going to take out Overseer. It did not look good there. But Overseer is the kind of card that... We want to be able to play it for free. It's probably just not too necessary here. You know, combat on the ground against what our opponent's doing doesn't look too necessary. the second elder spell mm. well, yeah, it takes a healy out it's not going to be good against deputy of detention but it could be okay against a fairy I don't know I'm just going to take it out Um. 
Well, this deck is not all lands, or like this hand is not all lands like we had before. Do I have a preferred Oko deck list? Yeah, I really like the the Oko food list we played the other day. Honestly. <laughs> oh, those are not, like... <laughs> I guess it's just whatever you have in your hand, that's what you draw. You know, like, we just had all lands in our hands, so that's all we drew. This time we had Elder Spell, Stone Coil, Serpent, so we're just going to draw Elder Spell, Stone Coil, Serpent. No, Sangriel, it's not. Sometimes Arena does not help you out. Yeah, if you check um, Smoke, if you check my YouTube channel, I have a playlist with a whole bunch of best of one decks on there. And so I'd recommend checking that out and seeing... And, you know, you can kind of see what, what best of one list list you like, basically, there. Yeah, I, pl I played two Sultai decks recently. I played, like, a Sultai midrange. They're plumber. I played a Sultai midrange and a Sultai um, food. And, like, I would recommend one of those two Sultai lists. Welcome to the family. And on, on all the videos, you know, Smoke, if you're, like, looking for a best of one deck, on, on all the videos, if you want, you can kind of go to the end and see what the record was and what I say about it and, and stuff like that, too. This is so incredibly frustrating. Hey, Gnome, that is awesome. Thank you so much for that big cheers. Thank you so much. Said you just finished top 1200, mostly playing the Teamer Walker stack. That is awesome. Congratulations. And thank you so much for, for that big cheers. I really appreciate that. This wasn't my fight in. All right, I'm just going to get rid of that Soren so it can't just keep on pumping the Nightveil Predator. I probably should have just done that the first time. But I was really hoping to draw land. Okay, finally. So blue cast Emery. Black cast Elder Spell. Green cast Veil of Summer. We're going to go green... I hope it just auto taps correctly. I don't know if it will or not. I just had to have Veil of Summer to protect my Serpent. Obviously, it being a 4 4 would have been better for Predator. King, wild and sovereign and free. Your new look is enchanting.
Okay. Ugin, good. So they can attack out at Oko and kill Oko, but then we would kill their murderous writer. So it's a good. I think it's overall a pretty good trade for me because we had to get that Haunt of the High Tower out of here. Or, you know, like had to switch it up. Um. There you go, you're watching Terminator Dark Fate tonight? Awesome. That's good. I am not going to sit this one out. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. <laughs> What's up, Harry? Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub there. If you threaten Innistrad, I will take it personally. I appreciate that. This is but a taste of my power. Alright, I'm glad they didn't sacrifice the high tower to kill the serpent, honestly. Plumber! Aw, thank you so much there, Plumber. Yeah, y'all are being so nice here on this Halloween. Thanks, Plumber. Cheers. Okay, so I'm going to we're going to kill these things. Step one. Really seen seen that that Step two. Play this. I definitely want to be able to recast my stone coil serpents from the graveyard. All right, so we're gonna play Ugin. And I think we got this game now. I'll play this for free. That's a good one. We're gonna play you for free. And make a 2 2. Secrets manifest before you. All right. Um, do I ever play modern or other constructed formats? Not anymore, no. Um, I mean, just basically just everything on arena. So you know, like brawl, historic, those things. Especially when they're, whenever they really start supporting them. But so basically, I just do best of one and, and regular standard right now. Um, all right, anything else to do? Stone Coral Serpent is awesome against Night Vale Predator. Just got the six CMC Oko from a pack. You can't you can't get that card from a pack. That's not in the packs. You could have gotten it for like a, I don't know, like a, a season reward or like not season, but like a, a mastery reward. I think you probably got it there. Just 
maybe like one of the levels in the, the mastery system gives it to you. Elder Spell was pretty clutch last game. Oh, it, oh, it, you, so you actually opened the regular Oko. You just thought you saw, you thought you saw the 6 CMC one. You went and checked your collection. There you go. Well, you got the, the best card in standard there. So, congrats. Taking the egg. I guess they just don't care how old my spells are. They just don't want me having any eggs over here. Yeah, Oko is very easily the best card in standard. Well, they messed up that auto pay. It's supposed to be three, but I guess if you auto pay, it counts the artifact still in play. Because you have to sack the artifact for mana. Once you sack that, then this thing costs three. Like it, it really should have cost three mana. All right, what do we got over here? Mystic Forge. Emery's been looking good. Uh, I guess it's true. Okay, so yeah, it's going with the the announce. You announce the spell, and then it locks in the cost. Okay. Let's go on that route. All right. So, do I want to draw Overgrown Tomb? I can pay a life and then exile it and not draw Overgrown Tomb. I'm gonna do that. Guess we draw that thing. Pretty sure I just need Interplanar Beacon. Need to look for Stone Coil Serpent. I'm glad they did that. Those having more Golos. Um, actually, I'm gonna just take the land. Yeah, I'm going to take the lands. Okay, Karn, what can you do if I play you? Not very much, I guess, is the correct answer. You can go, that can go grab Wishclaw Talisman. And then Talisman can give me Stone Coil Serpent. So I guess that's not bad. No, I have all four stone coils are in the main. I will fight with honor. I will not stop.
Okay. I am proud to have fought. So if I do wish claw, I guess they get to. They get to activate my Wish Claw Talisman also. There's Stone Coil. So now with Karn gone. Sure. I'll grab a 2-2. Boo. Too many unreliable variables. I'm going to keep the Mystic Forge. Tez. No, I want this Tez. Ugh. That's unfortunate. That means I don't get to go low, so I don't get to do anything. Cause I just, I just want to draw this Tezzeret. So I'm just gonna play these things. My next turn's gonna be pretty sweet. Eh, less sweet. Golos was gonna be free. I guess I get to pick it. I guess I can minus Tez and pick it up. More Tez? You're a fool if you think you can help maneuver me. I think that, yeah, I think the new Theros Full Art Lands are pretty cool. I can certainly understand if they're not for everybody. But I like them. I think we should play... Oven. <clears throat> hmm. All right, Karn's free because of Tezzeret giving Planeswalkers and Artifacts um, Affinity. So we're going to go ahead and give them the Wishclaw Talisman, but they can't activate it now. Um, that Oko's kind of stuck there. I don't need Watery Grave. I don't need Fabled Passage. Ugin's cool. Yeah, let's play it. It's free. Do not defy the designs of an elder dragon.
cast this thing. Oh dang. Okay, let's see. Hey, Radical Guru. <laughs> Happy Spooks Day. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We'll just play this as an eleven, eleven for free. Arena doesn't really like it when I play this deck. It's too much. We're breaking Arena. We can still activate this Golos too. Don't really need that. Don't really need that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Let's activate. Running out of stuff to do. A new Tez. That's free. That's free. So Thief of Crown would be free. All right, they give up. <laughs> uh, we we're gonna be able to like just guess minus Ugin and then play the new Ugin for free. Just get to go through the whole, um, through the whole deck. Yeah, I restarted right before this match. <laughs> but yeah, I guess we have to restart every every match with this deck. Yeah, it's it's definitely yeah, it's definitely my computer, but it's it's arena causing it on my computer. It's cuz yeah, it's it's arena causing my computer to lag kind of thing. And cuz yeah, I know I know it affects the camera and everything. It is frame drops. That is it is like frame drops are definitely a problem. Um, uh, I am planning on getting a brand new computer to hopefully help with all of that. I mean, it's also kind of like my, my, I mean, I think it's just kind of combination of internet, arena, computer, everything. Um, but that'll be after I move. I am in the, the slow process that I'm finally got, gotten into, like really into the process of like, you know, um, I'm getting a, approved for loans right now for whatever loan amount I can get approved for and then seeing what can I, I can afford and all that kind of stuff. And after I move, maybe in December or January, I think, I think I'll probably be moved by January. And then we'll see how much money I have left over and what I can afford for a computer and that kind of stuff. Afterwards... Hey, Chief Spark Double is, of course, absolutely amazing with, like, whenever you have, like, your, your six mana Planeswalkers and stuff. But Spark Double is not a colorless card that you can cast off the top, which that's some, definitely something, like, we want, we want lots and lots of colorless cards. I'm Spark Double is not a colorless card. And it's, it's kind of like a card that's only at its best whenever we're already winning. Kind of thing. Explain this deck really quick. Um, we're trying to set up Mystic Forge and Ugin and cast a lot of stuff off the top of our deck for free. And Tezzeret also helps out with that and finishes the game with the plus two ability. Oh dear. So my hand wasn't very good. We already mulliganed though. I could have gone down to five. I was just hoping to draw a blue source and be able to play Oko, but no, we we obviously did not. Okay, there we go. The brambles of truth twirl and curl, choking out lies. 
gaze into my face and put on your true shape. Ugin says your colorless spells cost two less to cast, so all of the spells that cost colorless spells that cost two mana or less are free. Tezzeret makes your creatures and planeswalkers basically free. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna let them think that we're just kind of like a regular Sultai deck. That thing's very over. So I talked about before. Oko from from my opponent's side, Oko is is definitely a problem because you know turns all of my artifacts into three threes. It's certainly a problem. My answer before was Spyglass, but now we're playing our own Okos, so I don't really want to Spyglass Oko. <laughs> hey, Dragon. You have got that holiday tie. Um... I'm going to take out one Golos, one <clears throat> Overseer for the Elder Spells. Okay, good draw. Why do you want to automatically use my golden egg deck? Who's more foolish? The food or the food? It's not poison. Trust me. Castle will come to play tapped. I want to save Fabled Passage for after we have Mystic Forge to be able to shuffle. I think we can afford the two life. Let's broaden your existence. So I need four artifacts in play if I play Tezzeret to play Karn for free. They're not they're ignoring my Mystic Forge. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. <sighs> Quite the nibble. Hmm. I 
rid you of your corruption. I invite you to change your ways. All right, so this next turn I'll be able to go Ugin and Spyglass Oko. So they're not going to kill my Oko. I think they forgot the questing beast doesn't do damage. There are greater battles to fight. They're not killing my Oko. Welcome to the feast. Ugh. Yeah, shuffle that away. That's unfortunate. That would have been a great card to have on top. Unfortunate. <laughs> Twelve hours dream. I didn't know, man. But yep, you made it. You understand reality. You understand yourself. Let's broaden your existence. Deputy of Detention? Uh, that's really annoying. Hmm. Yeah, that deputy is quite problematic. So I could have I could have activated Mystic Forge and gotten rid of the Emery and then try to hit more free artifacts while we have Ugin before it leaves and before it's killed by combat here. This is why that deputy was a problem. Tesseract only minuses and gets artifacts back. Does not get Planeswalkers back. So it can't get Ugin or Karn back. All right, so they realize the Questing Beast doesn't hurt my Planeswalkers now. So I cannot keep Ugin alive. I can keep Oko alive. By blocking forest. 
But Oko's just at two loyalty, so what's Oko really going to do at two loyalty? I can just kill the Paradise Druid and keep my blocker. I think I want to do that. Fine. Remain blind. Yeah, three mana Gideon is... Yes, yeah, so while it can fit in the... It could fit in the Orzhov value deck, but it's not... It's not great unless you are ahead kind of thing. Tesseract just doesn't do a whole lot right now. I'm going to play this Emery first. Ah, uh, too late. I should, have just, I should have just exiled that Mystic Forge. Off the top. I would have rather had that land, for sure. Sultai Aggro with Oko or Inventions with Sarkin? What what color Inventions? But which deck do you think is better? Pro I mean, I, I think I guess no matter what you say there, I would say the Sultai with Oko. I really know how to keep myself from just getting destroyed by this Nissa. I guess that's how. I gotta hope they don't have any counter spells or anything. Do not defy the design. I guess I, I could have killed the deputy and then spy, kept Spyglass on Nissa. It's a little riskier. Destroy. Here we go. Unfortunately, I can't cast this in response. We just have to draw it. Okay, so I can I can cast it like a, a guild globe or a golden egg still. Yeah, I really want to do that. I want this land drop. And get another artifact in here. That's a really good card. Okay, we have hope. We have hope. Yeah, you know, we gotta un we gotta not die. But as long as we don't die, we have hope. So satisfying winning with this deck, if, if we if we can pull this off. Tesseract and Nugent are so much, so much fun. OK. 
Okay, we're at one. That's not zero. Still alive. Them letting me on top with Ugin is, is a huge mistake. Oh. Okay, they can't do anything too crazy. Let us see if your talents are worth I think they may be dead now. That could be game. Uh, maybe not actual game, but like, now they're gonna die. We, we actually get to untap with Ugin, Tezzeret, Mystic Forge, like, we're gonna go crazy here. I can deal with that. That's not a, that's not a big deal. Okay. Well, let's just start uh, playing stuff for free first. Ooh, get another beacon. All right, beacon's perfect because now we can play this Oko also. Oh come on, you got to tap better than that. Auto tap. I guess I should leave leave those two. Oh wait, I can't play Oko off the top. I can only play colorless spells off the top. I take what I need. So do I want Here, Oko, you can just get tucked over here. Another Oko? All right, we'll shuffle. Go grab another beacon. It's <laughs> still Oko. All right, get this Karn. Our actions determine the course of this sex. My allies are counting on me. So I, I can play Meteor Golem for free. So I can go like Meteor Golem or Spyglass. Okay. I guess they said that's it. They should be sideboarding out Vale of Summer again. Let's get these ritual sets in here with them playing Deputy of Detention and all their mana creatures and stuff. We're going to drain for like, yeah, one's not zero. We're going to be able to drain for like 10-ish with that Tez. <laughs> Sound bugs are the worst. All right, so this is difficult. I think we have to put back Ugin, unfortunately. I think I need all these lands, even though Ugin's, like, my best card. I think it's just what we have to do. You know, I think besides that, I could put back the egg. But... The egg, you know, having an egg in play before we play Oko is pretty nice. No, that would have been no, that would have been my stream lagging. If it whenever it lags like that, if you just refresh. Walk with me, sing with me. I will usually fixes it. But or or just wait a little gone. bit.
Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. I invite you to change your ways. So they had turn three Oko again. I mean, Oko's the best card in the format, but it's also one of the best cards in the format against me, specifically. All right, good. We get a fifth land. I, I definitely want the fifth land to be able to play Golos. Wow. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. Probably should grab a blue land for Emery. I got double black already. I could grab... I could just grab Castle with double black. into my face and put on your true shape. So, huh, so Chrome, it's, it's really laggy. Firefox is not as much. I mean, I, I use, I do use Chrome. Yeah, I use Chrome. Oh dear. in your deceit. Hmm. Really use one of those ritual sets. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. I invite you to change your ways. I 
All right, so we got nine lands out of the deck. This Oko has obviously just been destroying us. Yeah, that's why that's why Vessel's so good. It fills the graveyard. How's it lands everywhere? Just lands everywhere. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. So that's, that's, again, half of our lands and 19 cards. Uh, nothing but lands. 12, 12 lands out of 19 cards there. Okay, so we went three and two, which which isn't bad. Our losses felt felt a little unlucky. I said going in that like there's two things with this deck that I'm that I'm that I think that is the scariest things, and those are the two things that we lost to. We lost to just really good mono red hands. Mono red's just going to be a, a difficult deck to deal with, for sure. And then we lost to turn three Oko. That that last opponent had turn three Oko all three games, and we were still we were still in the games that we lost, and you know we barely p pulled out the one that we won. Also, like they were all close, but. Oko is just amazing, and having, I guess they had turn two Oko one game, they had turn two and then turn three, then turn three. It's a really hard to, to beat that card. Um, I mean, that's that's why we have the card in our own deck. It's really good. It's really good. I do think that, that having Oko in the deck made our deck better, though. Uh, I think this deck was better with Oko. Um, I'd have to say the card that I was disappointed with with the most was probably Sahili. I keep thinking like Sahili is gonna be good, but we just we never like draw the Sahili, and we never play it early, and it never never really does anything because of that. You know, like we just never had Sahili. Like we had Sahili in our hand like maybe one time, and we were just busy casting other things, and we couldn't 
couldn't play it. Like I think we had it against Mono Red. It was like the only time we ever drew it. Um, so, so I don't know. Hey, Samurai Man. Yeah, there's spy glasses in the sideboard, but it's fighting Oko with Spyglass isn't great when you were playing your own Okos, because you know if you just if you just Spyglass Oko, but then you just have your own Oko. Um, yeah, yeah, I used to play Chromatic Lanterns. Um, instead of Sahili, I think what I would probably play if I don't play Sahili's are some interactions. You know, like main deck Elder Spell, main deck Ritual of Soot kind of thing. I think I think we'd play interaction. I think I, I would want that. Um, you know, probably Ritual of Soot. Maybe just play two, like two Ritual of Soot in the main. Because that, that helps against our, like the aggro decks and everything. And it's good against those Deputy of Detention, Nissa, Oko decks with all their mana creatures and everything. The thing is, obviously, Ritual so it's not great if we're going like Serpent, Steel, Overseer, Emery, like that kind of stuff. So like, it's kind of, kind of tough there. Hey, thanks, Samurai Man. Thanks for the Terminator cheer. Um, I think we can probably, like, how those games played and everything. I thought that I'd maybe want two meter golems, but maybe we only need one golem. And honestly, maybe we don't need the Citadel. I don't know. Citadel can be so good, though. See, that's the pro the problem with playing Karn. Like, Karn's really powerful. The problem is we don't get, like, a good sideboard. You know, I can't play a bunch of Noxious Grasp and Legion's Ends. Like, I want Noxious Grasp and Legion's Ends. Veil of Summer was awesome for us. I'm really glad we had that. For sure. Maybe Halloween's going great. Yeah. We're having a good, good stream here so far. Um... But Meteor Golems are very good. Like, a, a lot of times when we grab Meteor Golem, it's free because of Tezzeret. And, you know, zero mana, Vindicate, plus a 3-3. Three, three. Nothing wrong with that. Um... Or if it's, if it's not free with Tezzeret, it's, you know, five mana with Ugin, which also isn't so bad. So maybe a couple legions ends in here for like the red, you know, for the red matchup. And I think this is what I'd probably try. Try like a couple ritual of sets to help out against red and green. Some legions ends in the board for red. Maybe so instead of having the Sahilis, have those. I think that's that's what I'll try the next time. But the Okos were good. Um. I don't know. We could. I, I, I don't. I don't dislike Lantern. Lantern is, is pretty nice because our our deck is mana intensive. So we could, we could just go, just take out the two Sahilis and play one Lantern, one Ritual of Set, and then, replace. So basically, that you know, take out the two Sahilis, play one Lantern, one Ritual of Set, and then replace the second to Meteor Golem with a Legion's End. For aggro. That could work. Um, yeah, Witch's Oven. 
so we could if we go witch's oven we have to go cauldron familiar and that's the problem is that takes up like you know eight slots that would replace like the steel overseers probably which that's which that's fine steel overseers it's average It's like a good blocker after a couple of turns. Um, so that would replace like the Overseers, the Lantern, the Soot. You could get like, you know, three ovens, three cats. Without having Sahili, uh, like oven, oven's probably better with Sahili than without Sahili. I don't want to replace Golden Eggs and Guild Globes. I really like those cards. I think those cards are perfect. I'm gonna go with the clock tower. What's the name of that card? Midnight clock. Instead of chromatic lantern. The thing that's great about chromatic lantern is is it fixes like my my kind of tough mana, but it's you know, chromatic lantern is great with Golos. The thing that's good about Midnight Clock is it is an artifact which for Tezzeret. Basically, that's that's the big thing. It's an artifact for Tezzeret. So it's Lantern, though. Yeah. So there we go. So now that we're playing green, should we play Goose instead of Overseer? You don't get to play them for free with Ugin, but it ramps you. Yeah, whenever I played Glass Casket, I was surprised how much I didn't really like Glass Casket. Yeah, 3-2 three two, three two is good. Yeah, I, I think I like the fixing mana. The other thing is, Interplanar Beacon was pretty nice. I wouldn't mind playing like a fourth interplanar beacon. I never really seemed like I needed mobilized district. Playing a blast zone could help out against mono red though. Maybe that's maybe I'm supposed to play a blast zone for the mono red matchup. I don't know. We'll keep working on it. Mono Red and Turn 3 Yoko are two problems. <clears throat> but anyway, the deck the deck played well. Um, yet yeah, Mobilize District is like for like the control matchup. But honestly, our control matchup is is already good. Like that's those are like the like that's a good matchup for us. I'm just going to play a fourth beacon instead of it. Beacon helps us cast this Oko right away. Um, Overseer is worse if you're not playing Sahili also, though. Well, you would think it would be worse, but I don't know. We never really did anything with Sahili ever. Being able to like just getting like being able to slam Ugin and then with like Mystic Forge in play, slam Ugin and casting stuff for free off the top is so critical. And that's why Steel Overseer is so good. We saw that a lot of those games, like there was a couple of those games that Steel Overseers on the off the top off of Ugin helped me stabilize, like against the flash deck. Like if we're playing Gilded Goose instead, like we're not doing that. We're not winning there. The four mana Tezzeret? I don't think there's a four mana Tezzeret. Oh, have four Tezzeret and replace Oko with anti red. Oh, so you're just saying just play four Tezzerets instead of the Okos? No, I, I think that five is a good number of six mana planeswalkers to play. I like I like my five six mana planeswalkers. Correct. Yep, Samurai Man. Yeah, I moving. Yeah, basically adding Oko to the 
the Demir Affinity that we played before. All right, so anyway, so there we go. That's Soltai Affinity. We should get out of here so we can get to some more decks. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, leave a comment, do both of those. Um, I would appreciate that very much. But thank you so much for watching some Soltai Affinity, and I'll see you for the next video.